1979. Sci-fi cinema is in an interesting place right now, with films like Close Encounters, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Star Trek The Motion Picture, the awful Planet of the Apes sequels, and Soylent Green cementing the genre as being slow burn, thought provoking to an extent, films which rely completely on high concept science fiction narratives in dystopian futures with grotesque yet inventive ways of showcasing horror to the audience. However, in 1977, the genre was given an almighty shock with Star Wars, a fun energetic space opera unlike anything anyone had ever seen before. And seemingly on a dime, the demands of the people changed. No longer did they want films that challenged their perceptions of reality and existence. Now they wanted action, explosions, humor, quick-witted and starry-eyed main characters. And with this film in 1977, the audience turned their back on traditional sci-fi. So in 1979, when a film called Alien from rookie director Ridley Scott came along, the audiences got excited because this film is renowned today as a masterpiece of movie marketing. The poster is simple, an egg with green lights illuminating the poster, with a simple title, Alien striking instant curiosity, and then the trailer. I will hold to this day the trailer for Alien is the scariest piece of marketing I have ever seen for a movie, showing simple frantic shots of people running, yelling, and simply a shot of a cat hissing is enough to freak out the audience before their feature has even begun. However, the problem for the audiences came with the actual film. A year previous, Star Trek The Motion Picture arrived, after almost a decade of fans petitioning for the return of the cast in some incarnation. However, when greeted with a slow, visually striking, thought-provoking sci-fi drama, the audience was turned off because it wasn't Star Wars. It wasn't exciting. It had spectacle, but the movie asked you to marvel at it for far too long. The infamous dry dock scene coming to mind where Kirk and Scotty fly around the Enterprise for five interrupted minutes while the theme plays. And the film is what I maintain to this day to be the main reason Star Trek is not as big as it could be. However, with Alien, the marketing made it look like a fast-paced chase horror film kind of like Halloween from the previous year, set in space. But what we got was completely the opposite. We got a boring, two-hour slow burn film about a bunch of assholes in space who got hunted down by a guy in a rubber suit that only showed up every half an hour. And I love this film. This film is actually the reason I love cinema and have an interest and passion for it. But I'll get more into that in a later video. But as we may look back on this film now with a great fondness, the reputation of the film, much like The Empire Strikes Back a year later, was given a rocky foundation with its first critical reception. Here are some quotes. Basically just an intergalactic haunted house thriller. A rubber monster running amok in space. Alien sets and special effects are done well, but these things no longer surprise or tantalize us as they once did. Stomach-churning violence, slime, and sharks were some people's idea of a good time. A cruel, heartless, and essentially exploitative opus. That last one actually interested me. Exploitative opus. Did Ridley Scott and the producers see what had happened the year before with Star Trek The Motion Picture? And what happened when they released a boring sci-fi film? And in turn market their film to seem like a fast-paced sci-fi horror, rather than a slow, tension-building story? focused more on the characters rather than the monster itself. Well, years later reception of this film has completely changed. It has been preserved in the National Film Registry, ranked the 33rd greatest film of all time by Empire Magazine, and the 7th greatest sci-fi film of all time by the AFI. We have three sequels and two prequels, one of them being in my top 10 films of all time. The rest of the franchise is a topic I'll be addressing in a future video, but today I'd like to focus solely on the first film, this exploitative opus. And how in a world of so many horror films today, this boring, low-budget masterpiece is still infinitely more scary than anything we get today. And analyse the virtue of boring film. Before we start with that, please remember to like, share and subscribe to The Young Cynics. So first off, I'm going to say if you think the new Fast and Furious movie looks awesome, or you're pumped out of your mind for Venom 2, then I suggest leaving now as I fear you're going to be one of those people who go, got 15 minutes in, nothing happened, shit film. So, bye. Are the adults still here? Good. So Alien is of course known as a masterpiece in slow burn cinema. In fact, as most movies have their first scare as quickly as the first 5 minutes, for the first 20, Alien waits until 35 minutes and 16 seconds for the first real jolter, and then another 20 minutes after that for the iconic chest burster scene which we all now know as a spectacle of masterpiece horror theatre. Now, as some people might call the opening hour boring, people with a bit more tolerance will know it as setting the scene, developing our characters, making us aware of their plights, and developing them enough for us to know their base personality traits. 
While we now know Ripley to be our iconic protagonist, the film only truly centers on her with 40 minutes to go after Dallas gets a hug from the monster. The film truly is a masterpiece at making all of the characters feel equally valuable in the story and giving all of them a reason to be the last survivor. And the film sacrifices an hour of jump scares and tension building to give us these reasons. Dallas is the strong typical heroic type character, Ripley is the often talked down to junior staff member, Lambert the Tivan navigator seemingly fitting well into the fabled final girl spot. Brett and Parker are two undervalued engineers whose arcs would seemingly have one of them outlast the overpaid higher ups. Ash who stands out with a jumpsuit and is the most knowledgeable and cautious and Kane the ambitious explorer. Now not having a clear picture of your protagonist is clearly not always a good thing like in The Phantom Menace. However in a horror movie when we are introduced to our 17 year old high schooler we know she ain't dying. This film is very much ahead of its time in this aspect. Ridley Scott purposely giving all characters equal screen time and development in order to build that ambiguity. The film's slow atmospheric start is brilliant at immersing the audience into the world. Jerry Goldsmith's foreboding score playing over the shots of the ship. The interior and the simple yet bold Ron Cobb set design. Immediately, however gently introducing you to the world of the film. Contrast this with Star Wars where we are immediately thrust into the action before getting a more clear introduction to the world with 3PO and R2 on Tatooine. Alien has a more impactful opening as a whole to me, merely by how it causes the audience to fixate on the smallest details, questioning every aspect of the scene, allowing you to fully take in the world. Another aspect of being boring is of course how much is hidden, or less is more. One film which of course was the master of this was Spielberg's Jaws. Of course, keeping the monster hidden was not 100% due to intention, but rather to obligation due to the fabled technical difficulties that the props masters had with the mechanical shark, meaning that the beast would have to be hidden as much as possible, obscured by the water or just merely a fin, which turned out to be far more impactful. Of course, now the mere sight of a shark fin conjures the image of a much larger threat under the surface, and the John Williams theme subconsciously playing in one's head, showing that you don't have to give everything promised until the third act. Of course Alien does this incredibly with its xenomorph design being hidden for a large extent of the film. What is so terrifying about this is the bits your mind is filling in. As well as Jaws did this, we'd seen the posters and it was quite plain that it was a shark. A terrifying one, but something we'd seen before, something that is in our world. Whereas Alien was like being thrust into a haunted house and looking for something, which we had no clue of its appearance. Seeing bits at a time. It's black. It's big. It's got sharp teeth. A second mouth. Tubes on its back. A tail? In fact, we never got a real great look at the full creature. And I don't count this as being a full look as it's often shrouded and moves too fast. However, that makes it so much more perfect. A tactic taken years later in John McTiernan's Predator. Now comparing Alien to modern day horror films is an interesting topic. Horror movies nowadays, well, the corporate ones at least, have a formula. You start with the opening kill, introduce some main character who's a well-to-do person, they're having some sort of relationship problem, and then we cut between them and people being killed for the next 30 minutes, then they get an ominous warning from the monster, and then they're the one special snowflake who survives the first attack of the monster, and then the monster becomes fixated on them. Throw in a couple of dream sequences before we get our third act where one friend has to die, but ultimately our main character defeats the villain, yada yada yada, rinse repeat. Now of course not all horror is like this. Now some movies do this formula a lot better than others like The Babadook or Get Out, but then you have shit like Annabelle or Countdown. The problem is that no film anymore takes the proper time to build up its secondary characters, so everyone just feels like cannon fodder. Like take 2018's Halloween, the best friend, the dad, the cops, the documentarians, the boyfriend, all were given a couple of lines before just being taken out. With a lot of films today you know who's gonna die and when, they never throw in a big enough curveball. I often complain about action and superhero films trying to experiment with the formula too much, but with horror the problem is that half the horror movies released today have no tension because you can instantly tell who's going to die. Carrie was at the time a great depiction of horrific high schoolers getting their comeuppance, however now we have to see shit like the bye bye man or truth or dare and they also feel obligated to have a quota of one jump scare per five minutes. In Alien no scare is cheap and when there is a jump scare it's for good reason and has been built up for at least two to three minutes like the cave when Kane is attacked by the facehugger. It goes on just long enough to where you think that they'll be fine as it never jumps out but then as soon as you get comfortable <laughs> And there's no over the top music sting, like those fucking IT movies. The first one is fine when it's focused on the kids, 
but the film is a failure in scares, as everything is just jump scares accompanied by a REE! The best scene in the second one was by far the bleacher scene, that was genuinely creepy with the lighting and the absence of sound, which is how every scare in Alien is crafted. Take Brett's death. He and Ripley are separated for four minutes and the shots of the dangling chains and at one point actually seeing the alien. However, because we still haven't been definitively told what to look for, this just appears as some piece of equipment. And the film takes the trope of the last minute revival and stretches it out to be more than a pointless last second jump scare. Leading into that scene with one of the most tense scenes in horror history of Ripley trying to make her way to the escape pods with the blaring alarms and flashing lights creating a stunning atmosphere. But the truth is that horror has now lost what made Alien so special. Sci-fi horror today is more preoccupied with gore and spectacle rather than subtlety and mystery. The mainstream horror movie has become boiled completely down to high schoolers or a single mum getting attacked by an evil entity. No film takes Alien's tactic anymore of creating uncertainty as to the expendability of our protagonists. And this is another reason why creatures work so well as horror villains. They don't care about your place in the story. They have to eat, they have to survive, regardless of who you are. This is something I touched on in my Jurassic Park video. It's way better when the animals are taking out random characters, both protagonists and antagonists, rather than whoever's in Chris Pratt's way. This is also continued in the sequel Aliens where, sure, we knew Ripley would probably make it, but the film gave us enough time with the marines to care about them as well before they were randomly picked off. But that's my thoughts on the dying art of ambiguity and horror, and how sacrificing an hour of jump scares in order to create a slow tension filled atmospheric opening can greatly serve as the film's climax and how 40 years on, Alien is still the perfect example of this type of brilliant unclarity. So thanks guys for watching. My next video will be chapter two of my Star Wars fan fiction, Storms of Vengeance. So please make sure you're caught up with part one first. And then after that, I'll be doing a how to fix the Alien franchise video and creating a story to hopefully get the franchise back on track in some way. So please remember to like, share and subscribe. I've been Tyrone, the last survivor of the young cynics.